good morning, good day, good afternoon, good whatever time it is right now that you're watching this. Uh, my name is Casey Fox. I'm a dietitian and nutritionist here at St. Luke's at our Hope Clinic on Southside Bethlehem. Back again this week for another awesome edition of Cooking with Casey. I said my name's Casey. Um, so today, I'm really struggling getting my gloves out here, as you can see. Oh my gosh. Um, so Yep, one and two. Okay. Um, so like I said, my name is Casey. Um, today on our cooking show edition class, I'll be making a maple glazed salmon pan sear. So what? Yeah, we're getting a little fancy up in here. Right? I know some people do enjoy eating meat. Um, so I am doing a meat recipe for today, a, a lean meat recipe for today, making some fish. Okay, with a dressing that is going to double as both a salad dressing and a glaze for our fish. Okay, also going to be talking a lot today about food safety and the importance of practicing good safe food habits. Okay. Um, all right, so in terms of uh, kitchen equipment, really the only thing that you're going to need is a skillet. Okay, this big skillet is about a 12 inch skillet. Okay, fry pan, right? Um, you could also to actually do this recipe on the grill or um, even in an oven too, you can roast this recipe as well. All right, but I've got a skillet here. I've got a cutting board. And actually, if I were making this at home, well, actually, I, you should use two cutting boards. I'll explain why in a little bit, right? Got a nice big bowl for our salad, right? And a heat proof utensil so that we can go ahead and flip our uh, fish as we go. Okay, and also, most importantly for today, we're going to be focusing on our um, I said food safety, so I also have a food thermometer here, which I'll show you how to use in a couple minutes. All right, so with that said, let's get started. Okay, so I did make the dressing with a glaze um, ahead of time. All right, so in this glaze, I have three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. I just like the flavor of olive oil. You could also too use a vegetable or a canola oil if that's what you have at home. That would be fine. All right, so I have three tablespoons of olive oil, two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. I just love the, the sweet, acidic tang that this um, vinegar yields in this uh, salad dressing recipe. If you didn't have balsamic, don't sweat it. You could also too use a red wine vinegar or even like lemon juice or orange juice would be fine for this recipe too. That's what you have. No good deal. Okay. Got two tablespoons of the vinegar and one tablespoon of maple syrup. Right? Now when you are shopping for maple syrup, please make sure that it's a hundred percent pure maple syrup. Right? If you look at the ingredients list on the back, it should say ingredients pure maple syrup that's it right a lot of other maple syrups have high fructose corn syrup or a whole bunch of other added sugars maple syrup in and of itself is a natural sugar it doesn't need any more okay so just look for the pure maple syrup and you'll be good to go okay so it's kind of a, a three two one there three olive oil two maple syrup or two balsamic and one maple syrup Okay. I also have added in one teaspoon of Dijon mustard, as I've talked in episodes past, or Dijon mustard in a vinaigrette um, style, okay, it acts as an emulsifier, so it's going to help bind together that oil and vinegar, because usually they're not friends, so the emulsifier is going to act as like a mediator and help keep everyone together and conscious, all right? So I've got that, and then also to about a teaspoon of dried rosemary, all right? Just has a really nice, herbaceous, kind of warm, cozy flavor. I just love rosemary. Right. So got all that in there, a little pinch of salt, a little pinch of pepper as well, and then just whisk everything together. I make two batches here. Just because if you make a nice big batch of this at home, you can actually store this dressing in like a jelly jar, a clean jelly jar with the lid on, and then you can leave it in your fridge for like a week or so, and then you have solid dressing all week long. So, that's what we're going to do with that. Right? We've got that ready to go. Now, 
As for our main uh, dish, all right, I have um, about a teaspoon of olive oil in our can. Right? You could, again, use vegetable, canola oil, whatever, something so that your your stick to the bottom. Okay, right? we've got about a teaspoon, maybe a little bit more, because again, it's a pretty big pan here. Okay, we don't want our fish sticking to the bottom. Right now, I'm going to have this on about medium to medium low heat. Okay, so once your oil starts to kind of shimmer, that means that it's nice and warm. That means that you can go ahead and add your food. Okay, in this case, our salmon. Right? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to add the salmon. Okay, one. You want to be very careful with food safety. All right. So while I am using gloves, then I'm just going to practice good safe food habits. Okay. I'm going to go wash my hands, and when I come back, I'm going to explain why. All right. So hang tight. I will be right back in about 30 seconds. In the meantime, if you're watching this, you can either fast forward for about 30 seconds or go ahead and wash your hands. I'll be right back. reason that you want to wash your hands after handling any raw meat is because you don't want to be transferring any potential bacteria all over your kitchen surfaces, okay? Same reason why you want to use two separate cutting boards when you're uh, cutting or preparing raw meat at home, okay? Because again, you don't want to be transferring any of those germs all over creation, all right? Carefully get this out of the way. In fact, when I'm at home, I actually have two separate cutting boards for my uh, my fish and my raw produce, so my fresh foods. Okay, so my meat cutting board at home is red, and my other cutting board at home is white. Okay, so I know that the red one is only for raw proteins. Wasn't well, good for Okay, how many errors here? I'm cooking with Casey. Oh, good. Very uh, improvised. All right, so we've got our fish in the pan. Okay. Right? Um, now, again, when you're, you're storing your, your fish or any raw meat in the fridge, okay, you always want to keep it at the bottom of your fridge. So that way, if there's any potential juices or any liquids or anything like that, um, that way it's not dripping onto your fresh meat and foods, okay? So you're going to get some safety practice to get into there, all right? Now that this is in here, I'm just going to season the top with a little salt and pepper. Now this salmon was, uh, was skinless, okay? You could by all means get it with the skin on, that would be fine. Okay, in fact, my dog, my dog Cardon, at home, she loves whenever I cook fish, because she always gets the fish skin. It's kind of a little treat. All right, but unfortunately, you know, I can't exactly take my dog to work with me, so she's not here to enjoy fish skin. Um, and there's none to share with her anyway. So, anyway, I digress. Um, we also do, um, so salmon is one of those low mercury seafood items. I know there's a lot of concern out there for high mercury in seafood. Salmon is one of your safer choices, okay? Um, also, too, jam-packed with omega-3 fatty acids, right? So really, really, really good for your brain health. Also, too, for your heart health. It really helps to lower your triglycerides, help prevent heart attack, stroke, all that stuff, okay? Now, it is fish. Um, if you've ever met with me in person, you probably have heard me talk about lean protein. Well, fish is considered one of those lean proteins, meaning that it's very low in fat, or the fat that it does have is a healthy fat, right? A very good source of protein. Right? 
in fact, the um, American Heart Association, and actually the American Psychological Association, too, recommends eating fish at least twice a week just because of all the great benefits that it has in terms of um, brain health, heart health, all that, right? So it's going to take about four minutes or so for your salmon to cook per side, depending on how thick it is. Okay. So once you start to see that color change going up the, the filet, you're probably pretty good to give it a turn. All right. So we're going to give it a little flip here. Oh, should we just break this so it doesn't stick? Okay. There we go. We've enough oil. We're going to just flip it around the pan a little bit. Look, right. here we go. One, two, and three. Flip. Awesome. And another flip. Whoop. Awesome. All right, look at that. Very good. One of the benefits to cooking with skin on, if you can, um, is that the, uh, the it won't fall apart as you do. All right. That's okay. We're, we're working. We're making it work here. Now, since this is a thinner cut, the salmon is probably going to take like another two to three minutes or so to cook. But the only way to tell for sure that your fish and any meat is thoroughly cooked is by using a food thermometer. Okay, there's a whole bunch of theories out there. Oh, well, it should feel like the palm of your hand. It should be, you know, like pink, blah, blah, blah. But the only way to tell if it's thoroughly cooked is by using a food thermometer. And the reason I stress food safety so much is because you really, you don't want to end up with any foodborne illness by eating raw, undercooked meats. Okay, um, this is especially important if you're immunocompromised, if you're pregnant, if you're elderly, if you have very young kids at home. Right, really important to keep them safe. All right, so what we're gonna do is I have a digital thermometer here. Okay, I'm going to insert it into the thickest part of this fish fillet. Right, making sure not to touch um, the, the bottom, not to get all the way to the bottom of the pan. Okay, that's gonna be a really inaccurate reading. Okay, so for fish. I want fish to get to a temperature of 165. Excuse me, that's chicken. You want fish to get to a temperature of 145. If it's 165, there's definitely no bacteria in there for your fish. 145, though, for fish is recommended. All right, and right now we're at about 115. All right, just keep it in there until it reaches temp. Now, while that is getting up to temp, right, I'll show you what I did with the salad. Okay, so, so far, in my salad bowl, I have one shallot, one shallot, you and your real fancy. All right, so a shallot is nothing more than the it's a type of onion, all right? It looks like a small little red onion, right? If you don't have shallot, um, go ahead and just use regular a red onion or a white onion or a yellow onion. It's not onion you have as well, right? The shallot. It has a very mild oniony flavor, it's not as much of a punch as one of your other kinds of onions. Okay. Try my shallot in here. Okay, right. I'm also going to add in that quart cup of mandarin oranges. All right, these are canned mandarin oranges. Right, they actually come in one of those uh, little fruit cups. Okay. Also make Makes a great little snack, right? And this was packed in 100% juice. Okay, again, stay away from any unnecessary added sugars you don't need. Okay, the oranges. And then we also are going to use about two cups of arugula. One, and this, by the way, was already um, triple washed, ready to eat. Okay. If you don't like arugula, like my husband, and you don't like arugula, because it is a spicier, almost peppery um, salad green, you could definitely also do, use like a spinach or even a baby kale or a spring mix. I just really like the, uh, ooh, there we are. Huh. I just really like the spice that um, arugula has. So, I'm going to use that. Okay, then our fish right now is up to 
Right? She was with Max 145. It was definitely a okay job. All right, again, I check both blades, inserting it into the thickest part, okay, making sure that it reaches and stays at that 145. Right? So that is where we are at. We are good to go. I'm going to move that from the heat. Carefully, I'm dropping it on my throat. Okay. Here's a little hot pan. And now while that is cooling, I'm actually going to add it in. Hang tight with this gallon. I'll be right back with that. <laughs> there it is. It's a little bit of cooking, you know? It's, it's very kind of all over the place, you know? But you just got to have fun with it. That's what cooking is all about. Have fun. Okay? While my salmon is so still sizzling a little bit, I'm going to add our berries, our sauce. Okay. Mm -hmm. Some of this dressing. We used to work in school. Um, the kids would always call um, salad dressing sauce. This is fun. I want more sauce. More sauce to make salad. And our sauce is up on top. And now that it's done, I'm going to get like a nice little blade. Get a little caramelized. Nice and sweet. There we go. And then any extra, that's what you're going to need for your simple dress. The shallot in there. I'm also too for a little bit of crunch. I'm going to add in some uh, some pepitas. These are pumpkin seeds. You could also too. My original recipe that I had written was actually using um, toasted walnuts, but I have these pumpkin seeds in our pantry here, so I thought you know what I'm just going to use those up while I have. Okay, so I have about a third of a cup of those and about a quarter cup of dried cranberries. And then just give this a good toss, you know? Okay, get everybody mixed on up. Okay. And then go ahead and add some of your dressing. Okay, this is the dressing I have here. Salad is ready to rock and roll, and um, now I'm ready to, ready to plate it up. Okay, so because I have samples for the clinic staff upstairs, all right, I'm just going to show you what a small sample looks like. Okay, but this recipe is enough to make for, for two. Okay, and if you have leftovers, the fish will last in your refrigerator for about three days. Again, good food safety practices. Do not leave any leftovers outside of the fridge at room temp for more than two hours. Okay, it needs to be refrigerated within that two hour time frame. Again, just to make sure that no pathogens start to germs start to um, start to grow. Okay. It's good food safety habits there too. All right. Your salad dressing, as I mentioned before, will last for about a week or so, again, in the fridge. I kind of get my hands involved, you know? I mean, gosh, there's no other way. You feel your food, touch your food, right? Have fun with your food. All right, so I'm going to get a little bit of everybody up in here. Get the arugula, get some oranges, make sure you get some shallots and the seeds. Okay. And then take just a little bit of that salmon. Okay. Oh, yeah, that nice and crispy on the other side. Whoa. Uh -huh. Stir it right up on top, just like that. We have a little bit more dressing. 
go ahead and drizzle a little bit more right up on top. And then, you know, oh my gosh, there is a beautiful <laughs> salad. Okay, now if you wanted to make this a complete meal, if you wanted to add a grain or a starch to this, I would absolutely advise that you do so. Um, I think like a nice quinoa or couscous cold salad would be really great. Alongside this, maybe some warm whole wheat bread or pita bread, something like that would be great. Okay. But yeah, otherwise that is our maple glazed salmon, pan seared maple glazed salmon. Okay, um, with a arugula and orange um, wintery salad. Okay, um, just to wrap things up. Oh, actually, no, I forgot to mention. Um, if you're not a fan of fish, totally okay. Or you could also do, I think that this recipe would be great with like a chicken breast or a turkey cutlet. Um, I think that those flavors of that meat would really pair well nicely with the, the maple balsamic thing that we got going on here. Okay, so you definitely give that a try too. Again, if you were a fan of salmon. But you could even do actually maybe try like a, a cordial mushroom cap or, um, or a tofu if you were more plant based. You could definitely give that a shot too. Let me know what you think. All right. Um, but anyway, that is that. To kind of recap, all right, this um, cooking demo, we made one sauce with two different applications. We use it as a glaze for our salmon. We also use it as a dressing for our salad. Okay or sauce, as the kids like to say, all right? Um, again, I cannot stress the importance of food safety enough, okay? And really the only way to make sure that your meats are thoroughly cooked is to use a food safe thermometer. You can get these a bunch of different places, okay? I think just the grocery store sells them, all right? They're not expensive, but really it's the only way to make sure that your meat is thoroughly cooked and to prevent any food boredomness, okay? Which is especially important if you're immunocompromised, pregnant, elderly or have young kids at home, right? But really important for anyone, <laughs> okay? Um, again, for fish, 145. We're doing chicken or poultry, anything like that. With this recipe, it would be 165 that you want, okay? Um, and so, you know, don't forget, always wash your hands in between handling any raw meats, okay? Use separate cutting boards, separate knives, all that, okay? Um, so again, this has been this week's edition of Cooking with Casey. I'm Casey. This has been an absolute pleasure as always. I can't wait to try this and bring it on up to our clinic staff. Um, if you have any questions, if you have any recipe suggestions or topics for future demonstrations, please uh, give me a call, send me an email, let me know. We'd love to hear from you. Um, again, thank you very much. Take care. Happy cooking and happy eating. Bye.